Hi guys. Um, today we're going to cover a little bit about knife sharpening, uh, knife maintenance in general. Uh, so first off, um, let's talk about keeping our knives protected. Uh, I find in general we always want some kind of case for our knives, not only from a safety standpoint so we don't um, accidentally have it fall out of a bag or something and cut us, but also it protects the edge from chipping. So you can either use plastic cases or you can use a wooden one. There are a lot of options out there. And I guess before we sharpen, um, we can also talk about honing. Um, sometimes our knife is doesn't feel sharp, but it doesn't need to be sharpened yet. Uh, and that might just be because the burr on the edge has moved from the center down to one side. Uh, sometimes you can feel this when you run your thumb or any finger along it going not into the edge, but going away. You just kind of brush it and you might feel on one side something catches onto your skin more so than the other side. Uh, if so, it might be time to hone your knife. So to hone your knife, you run the edge towards the steel or the honing rod. And all this does is it resets that burr. Periodically you can check just to see if there is a difference. If you find yourself honing a lot and your knife does not feel noticeably sharper, it's probably time to sharpen. So when that time comes, I recommend the sharpening stone. There are a lot of different stones on the market. Some are synthetic, some are natural. Uh, I tend to like ceramics. Uh, here I have the Shafton glass series. Uh, I like this over the other ones because it doesn't require soaking. A lot of the wet stones out there, you have to soak it for a minimum of 10 minutes. And sometimes, even then, it feels like it's very rough on your knife. Before we begin, we just want to make sure the surface is pretty even. You can take the edges here and run them along here just to make sure we don't have anything that might catch on to our knives. Now, I think people often ask, how much pressure do I apply when I sharpen? Um, Bob Kramer has said you apply about five pounds. And you can very easily check. Just use a scale. You can grab a scale, you can grab a knife for reference. Envision yourself sharpening and just pushing down on that scale. Now, I will say personally, five pounds is a lot of pressure. I don't often apply five pounds of pressure. Um, I think normally I apply about, what is it? Three? Three pounds of pressure for me. The more pressure you apply, the quicker you strip your knife of its metal. You can see here on my Kramer, uh, the very, very, very edge has started taking on a patina, which means it has been a little while since I last sharpened. Now, once I start sharpening, that edge will become shiny again. I will be revealing new material. So 
here we go. This is a Western style knife. It's gonna be 50-50. I'm gonna sharpen the same number on both sides. I use two fingers to guide and to put, apply pressure. And there are a few ways to do this. I like to go all in one motion. I push down as I push forward. I release pressure as I come back. On the flip side, same. And I want to try to keep the same angle each time. So here, I'm pushing down as I pull it towards me. The towel it sits on, I never wash it. I will rinse it in hot water, I'll wring it out, uh, but generally it collects a lot of material from your sharpening stone, it collects a little material from your knives. I don't think it's really worth washing. In the first restaurant I worked at, they said if you use it long enough, you can actually it start taking on some of the grit from the stone. You can actually polish your knife with this towel. Uh, I've never really tried, but um, it certainly has taken on a lot of a lot of stuff. So here we're just going to repeat a couple of more times. I just want to make sure I'm going the same amount on both sides. And how many strokes you do just depends how much your knife needs to be sharpened. But you should already see that it has become shiny again. That the edge has lost its patina. And my test is I use my thumb now. I rest my knife on it. I am not pushing down. I don't want to cut my thumb off, but I push forward. And the sharper the knife gets, the more it wants to stick. It does not want to go along my nail. So I would say we're pretty good. We can also use the stone to sharpen the blade on a mandolin. This is something that maybe doesn't get done often enough. But it's quite dangerous. You really want to make sure your mandolin's really, really, really sharp. So same principle. We're going to find the angle. We're going to apply constant pressure throughout. And this one's interesting because on the flip side, you actually just push it flat. This is a single sided edge. And here I, I actually change it up a little. I'm applying pressure as I push on the back, back side as well. So it's a little more aggressive. Applying pressure as I push. We use our mandolin to cut a lot of things here. Anything from raw onions all the way to something really hard like taro root. It's 
quite important that we sharpen it regularly. Otherwise, after you do the taro root, you will find it doesn't cut the onion very well. And it is starting to get there. In the interest of time, I'm going to finish it later. I want to show you um, a Japanese yanagi. We're going to sharpen this guy. I haven't sharpened it in a while. This one we're only going to... Uh, it's a single side. Just like our mandolin blade. So we find the angle on this side. There are a few ways to do this. Again, we could follow that entire length. Or you could break it up. Since it's so long, that might be a little um, hard to maintain. You could do it in segments. And then you would move down. You could break it into two or even three segments. I would recommend going more strokes near the top. And fewer strokes on the bottom. Only because that way, if there's a little inconsistency, we will wear out the top a little faster than we wear out the bottom. Uh, which is fine, it will change the angle just a little bit, but it's better than having your knife blow inwards, or even worse, if you're losing more material down here. You kind of always want to make sure that you have a little more thickness here than you do here. On the back side, it's just completely flat, and I'm going to push into it. This one's feeling good. Now, we can also talk about grit. So this is my 1000 grit. Uh, this is kind of a medium level coarseness. I like starting on this guy because it removes material a little faster. Sometimes we'll go up to a 4000 or even an 8000. This is just a finer grit. Um, my knives can get plenty sharp on a thousand, but the 8000 um, not only just makes that edge a little keener, uh, it also makes it a little shinier. So sometimes, just for presentation purposes, I go up to an 8000 and even a 16000 once in a while. All right, um, in addition to the thumbnail, we can also just take some paper. Here I have some scratch paper. And we can just see how easily our knife cuts through it. And you can do this at various stages of sharpening so that you get a feeling for it. Now, it is certainly easier to cut if you run your knife along so I'm using the entire length of my knife but if you want to get a good test you can also try to just push 
I'm not running my knife along anything. I'm just pushing straight down. So let's see. So again, can pull. Or you can see if you're able to just push straight down. Ultimately, we could do this all day, but the most important thing is to get some ingredients, start cutting them, and see how it feels. And just try to make sure that your knives operate in a way that makes sense to you so that ultimately they're safer. Um, let me know if there's any questions you have in addition to what I've shown here today. Also, I do want to note there are a lot of ways to sharpen your knives. Uh, this is kind of what I've been taught and how I've adapted it over the years. Um, you will probably see other ways to sharpen your knives on a stone elsewhere. Um, and there is no wrong way, it's just which way do you feel the most comfortable using and gets the best results. Um, if you like the video, please like, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.